Bienvenidos a Colombia Antigua. La historia es para compartirla sin egoísmo. Es por eso que cada video tiene el enlace y la información de dónde fue descargado. Esperamos que los videos y la información sean útiles para usted. Protection test studies on all these species 
It is evident that they are subject to severe epidemics of yellow fever, so that frequently the surviving population is nearly all immune. With some strains of the jungle virus, some of the monkeys die, but mortality under experimental conditions is usually low. At Leticia, Colombia has access to the Amazon River. In addition to its military value, it is a natural future center for airlines to the south. The jungle-covered border of Peru is seen across the river. The boundary with Brazil is a mile downstream. While for rapid movement, the airplane is essential, most of the travel is by rivers, such as the Ortiguato, which passes through fertile forests and grasslands to join the Rio Caquetá. Malaria is a scourge, and even leprosy, such as shown by this woman, is occasionally noted. Flowering trees are seen near the river, while at a somewhat greater elevation, orchids bloom. Mitu, near the Brazilian border, is an important center for the collection of rubber, where the raw gum is traded for items esteemed by the Indians. This jungle activity is constantly menaced by yellow fever so that it is essential to vaccinate a large portion of the population. Nearly 500 miles to the west, at the foot of the mountains, is Florencia, the capital of Caquita. Through this town flows most of the commerce destined for the Amazon area of Colombia, and it is the center for the military control of the entire region. In the Cordilleras of the Andes, numerous streams fall rapidly toward the plains forming great reserves of potential water power, as at the falls of Tequindama near Bogota. The capital city lies on a high plateau, almost 9,000 feet above the sea. Founded over 400 years ago, it is the cultural and commercial center of Colombia. To its huge markets comes the produce of all parts of the country, so that in this modern city, one enjoys the fruits of the hot lowlands with the more hardy crops of the high and cold plateau. The market is a social as well as commercial center. Tradesmen meet their friends, and servants from the leading families of the city exchange the latest gossip. Naturally, with a congregation of so many people from many parts of the country, diseases are brought as well as produce. Exanthematic type of fever has been introduced by this means, and numerous cases have occurred from contact with this market. The city is likewise the focus for diverse interests, so that inevitably many businesses have their central offices in Bogota. Here was established the main laboratory for the study of yellow fever and for the manufacture of the protective vaccine. With such rugged terrain, landslides are frequent and roads difficult to maintain. The spectacular road from Bogota to Villa Vicencio forms the only channel by which motor traffic may reach the Llano. During the rainy season, great slides may cover the road or sweep parts of it into the abyss below. In this portion, two bridges have been lost, and the road has been restored by cutting deeper into the side of the mountain. From the pass of over 11,000 feet, the road falls to 1,500 feet at Villa Vicencio. Here in yellow fever country, a well-equipped virus laboratory has been maintained since 1938. Near the center of the country, on the Rio Minero, lies Muso, famous for its emeralds and its yellow fever. Here, many have died of the dread disease. Most of the cases of jungle yellow fever occur in such surroundings as these. From the simple hut placed close to the margins of the forest, the woodsman goes into the jungle to continue his clearing. In the shadowy forest, the blows of the axe and the tearing of the foliage disturb the mosquitoes resting aloft. Those of the genus Hemagogus lay their eggs in tree holes, often far above the ground, and the larvae develop in the water caught by these pockets. The adults are voracious and will feed on any warm-blooded animal. Among those attacking the woodcutter, 
There is one with yellow fever virus from previously biting an infected animal. It bites the man, and it is the bite of death. Within a week, he falls ill, becomes violently worse, and dies. A specimen of liver sent to the Bogota laboratory is positive for yellow fever. Here in the valley of death, near the river of emeralds, is the opportunity for which the laboratory staff has been waiting. Along the mountain trails of the Emerald Country winds the pack train loaded with laboratory and camp equipment. Weight is kept at a minimum, and nothing is carried that is not essential to the work. Not only yellow fever, but malaria and heavy rains must be considered. Where game is plentiful, the food to be carried may be reduced, but in some regions even grain for the mules must be packed. Laboratory monkeys are carried and hundreds of white mice for the experimental work. A campsite is selected near the place where the victim was working when he became infected. The thick jungle must be cleared away with machetes so that more light and air may be admitted to dry the soggy ground. In a few hours, the camp is finished. Tarpaulins are stretched to shed water. Tables and benches are made from the materials at hand. Hammocks for sleeping are hung between trees and protected from rain by tarpaulins of light weight. Since simultaneous studies of animals and insects are to be made, traps are set at once. Several distinct types of environment may be found in a small area, and trap locations must be selected accordingly. First-hand knowledge of the habits of animals is essential and is gained only by experience and constant observation in the forest itself. Some animals will refuse to enter if the scent of man lingers about the trap, while others, especially those commonly in human association, are not alarmed. Return visits are made each morning, and the cats carried away in a sack, leaving the trap reset. Either in camp or at the central laboratory, the animals are bled and their serra examined for antibodies of yellow fever. Most of the animals caught near Muso are marsupials, exceeding in numbers even the rodents. The common opossum, the Delphus marsupialis, is most frequent and shows a variation of ear color and pelage, so that it resembles the Delphus virginiana of the United States. The white-faced Delphus paraguayensis is to be found only in the high country. Near Muso, there are also large numbers of such genera as Philander and Metachiris. All these forms are susceptible to the virus of yellow fever and show evidences of infection in the jungle. While in other parts of the country, the monkeys and the marsupials have a common range, Muso is distinctive because of the absence of monkeys. The discovery that Haemagogus prefers the foliage zone made clear the importance of searching all levels if good samples of the mosquito fauna are desired, particularly with respect to those suspected of playing the most important part in the epidemiology. Athletic ability and skill are required in addition to the scientific qualification. The members of the expedition themselves serve as bait and catch the insects that come to bite them. Each mosquito is taken in a small glass tube closed with a cotton plug. In such tubes, delicate mosquitoes may be carried long distances without serious injury. Not only mosquitoes, but all arthropods are sought, including many that do not bite. After the catch is brought into camp, the scientists separate the insects by species while they remain in the tube. Experience has already directed attention to certain ones, notably Hemagogus, Aedes lupusolanus, and Aedes cuviatilus so that these receive special treatment and are tested for their ability to transmit by bite as well as being examined for the presence of yellow fever virus.
The test monkey, a macacus rhesus, which behaves with yellow fever very much like man, is tied down and placed within a light tent. After the monkey has been bitten by the mosquitoes, his blood is examined daily for the presence of yellow fever virus. And should he survive, he is bled a month later for a demonstration of yellow fever antibodies. The mosquitoes to be tested are allowed to bite him at will and are then recaptured from the walls of the tent, which further serves to prevent attacks by other insects. After feeding on the monkey, the mosquitoes are killed with chloroform and ground in a mortar with a small amount of normal monkey serum. This material is to be tested for virus and additional serum protein is added to prevent the inactivation of the infectious agent. The coarse particles are thrown out by spinning the triturated material in a hand centrifuge. Where necessary, the supernate may also be filtered to eliminate bacteria, but with mosquitoes, this is seldom indicated. The clear supernate is taken up in a tuberculin syringe. Mice are anesthetized with ether in a tin can, and then small amounts of the material are inoculated directly into their brain. If yellow fever virus is present, in a week or 10 days, they become paralyzed, and virus can be recovered from their brains for further study. By such methods, it has been found that the marsupials, especially near Musso, appear to play a dominant part as intermediate hosts. Elsewhere, the monkeys may be of greater importance. The virus is carried from animal to animal, or from animal to man, by various species of the genus Hemagogus, notably Capricorni and Lucifer. The reservoir, so far as it exists, is in the mosquitoes, which may carry the virus for months. The vaccination commission of a doctor and assistant is equipped to operate independently. A portable kerosene refrigerator is carried, so that during the night, ice is made to chill the vaccine the following day. In other containers, the material required to administer the vaccine is packed while the vaccine itself is carried in a large thermos jug which is filled with ice daily. With such relatively simple organization, commissions have worked in the field for several weeks without contact with the central laboratory. Over every type of trail and in all kinds of weather, they've carried on their labor. Mules have been drowned in fording streams or have been killed in falls from dangerous trails. Equipment has been lost and men injured. But despite the difficulties, the vaccine has been brought to those who most need it. As usual, the arrival of the doctor is a welcome one to the villagers. For among these people who have seen yellow fever in their own families, the vaccine needs no advertising. The group is greeted by the mayor and given the best quarters that the village affords. The packs are dropped from the backs of the tired beasts, which are then examined for injuries, and turned out to pasture to rest until the next trip. Since it is Sunday and a market day, the vaccination is to begin this same afternoon. While the equipment is being unpacked, the assistant hangs posters announcing the vaccination, its purpose, and the hour and place. For those who cannot read, the town crier repeats the announcement many times stressing the statement that the vaccine does not interfere with the usual gastronomic pleasures of a fiesta. The village priest assists by reassuring the dubious and in distributing leaflets, by these acts expressing the church's approval of this public health activity. The patio of the hygiene center is chosen for the vaccination, and the assistant arranges the tables for the equipment and for himself in his capacity as secretary. Syringes and needles are boiled. The syringes are placed on a sterilized tray. The discs of needles are attached to their support. Needles can be changed quickly so that the contents of one syringe suffices to vaccinate 20 persons without danger of spreading infection. 
the dried vaccine is rehydrated in physiological salt solution and kept chilled until use. That which remains after one hour is discarded and a fresh lot is prepared. Those persons who are ready are vaccinated rapidly. Alcohol is used for rapid cleansing of the skin, following which one half cubic centimeter of the diluted vaccine is injected subcutaneously. In spite of the rapidity of the procedure, infections have not been known. Meanwhile, the assistant continues with the registration of the people by name, age, sex, occupation, and residence. With each group, the complete details of the vaccination itself are recorded so that there is a permanent file of all those vaccinated in the country. It is particularly the children who most need the vaccination. Therefore, a special effort is made to reach the schools. All through the day, the line outside the hygiene center forms. But when night falls, all who wish it have been vaccinated. Those returning to distant valleys have been asked to tell others to come the following day. And thus, month by month, the total rises. Until today, most of the residents of the danger zones have been protected. <laughs>